The Mushroom Eaters is a two to five player game by Maverick independent designer Nate Hayden. It is a deeply thematic and involving game about embarking on a psychedelic mushroom trip with simple strategies and a dose of luck lasting 45 to 60 minutes per player. It looks complicated, but gameplay is mostly straightforward. You might have a good trip or a bad one. You must fight to stay in control and gain as much as you can from the experience so that the shaman will select you as her successor. The winner is the player who gained the most experience points. Awakening tokens are worth a point each, face tokens three points each, the rare wisdom tokens two points each, paradox tokens half a point each, and the player with the most paradox tokens at the end gets a bonus six points. Finally, the player with the most personal path cards gets a bonus three points. All this is neatly summed up on the reference cards. Place the board on the table showing panels A and B, leaving room to unfold the board as the game progresses. Lay out the nervous system board, focus boards, talking board, environment cards, share cards, personal path cards, awakening tokens, paradox tokens, face tokens, wisdom tokens, and the challenge dice. Separate the mantra tokens by letter and put them in A, B, C, D, E stacks. Each stack should have one less token than there are players, except in a two-player game you still have two of each. Put all the action tokens face down in a pile, then take two to put on the X's. You'll have to add new ones each time you unfold a new part of the board. Give each player the eight mood cards of their colour, a breathe token flipped to the not deep breathing side, eight big focus cubes and two personal path octagons. Put each player's talking token in the middle of the talking board. Put each player's small nervous system cubes on the red starting spaces. Each player will put one focus cube on the hour track in player order and one cube on the shaman drum track in reverse player order. Finally, put the shaman pawn on the starting space. I have a really cool customized shaman and you're ready to start. You can also use the first player marker, the reference cards, and of course the 3D glasses. On your turn, you play one of your mood cards, leaving it in a discard pile face up in front of you. Then you move the shaman pawn exactly that many spaces and do whatever the space says. Then the next player does the same thing until the shaman inevitably reaches the end of the track and the game is over. Each time you run out of mood cards, you pick up your discard pile so you have a full hand again. When the game requires you to lose an item, you can choose to lose a cube from either focus board, a nervous system energy level on either track, any token in your possession, or a completed personal path card. The rulebook has a good quick reference guide to what all of the spaces do. So I suggest that you just start playing and see what happens. So Brown starts the game. The Shaman starts on a must-do space. So rather than playing a mood card as normal to progress, the Shaman has to do the two things in the must-do space. So first, a fire space. And what that means is that each player takes turns to play a mood card from their hand. And whatever it says on the mood card next to the fire symbol, you can gain that. In this case, I can add a cube to one of the face tracks and I'm going to add it to the hour track. And then yellow would play a mood card and gain the benefit. Yellow chooses this and goes up two on the nervous system track, chooses to go up one on the nervous system intensity track and one on the nervous system moving forward track. And then red plays this card and flips her deep breathing token. Then the shaman progresses to this and each player can choose an awakening to go up one on the nervous system track or to add a cube to fake one of the face tracks. Okay, the must do space is finished, so now it's the next person's turn. Now it's yellow's turn. If yellow played a zero on this space, the must do space can't happen again. So it would be the same as passing. So yellow is going to play a two and move the shaman on two. Gets to flip deep breathing. Now it's red's turn. Red is going to play a one, move forward one, and get an awakening token. We've already seen that the fire space allows all players to play another mood card and get the benefit from that. Peaceful allows each player to choose either an awakening token to go up on either of the nervous system tracks or to add a cube to either of the focus tracks. The environment space allows you to pick an environment card and then each player must discard an extra mood card to get the benefit or disbenefit listed, in this case plus one nervous system or any mantra token. 
This one and the next one have a 1 on them, which mean that they only apply to the current player. In this case, you can flip your token to Deep Breathing, or you can take an Awakening token. This means you've got to take a Share card. Only pay attention to the sharing side of the card here. You choose two of the items, and you choose another player to get the third item. This one means each player must lose a cube on the, either of the focus boards. This one means that each player must lose one level on either of the nervous system boards. This means each player must lose one item. And this means that you can take back a mood card from your discard pile back into your hand. Yellow plays a two. The shaman moves two. And all players are going to experience an intense moment of value five. First, yellow rolls a dice. So actually the value of this intense moment is six rather than five. Yellow has a nervous system value of six so passes the test and gets one piece of the great paradox. Brown and red both don't have enough to pass the test so they must lose any one item and then after an intense moment everybody goes down one on the nervous system track from either side. If you land on the shaman drum space or the face space you will test the status of the relevant focus board. When testing the hour track See who has a majority of focus cubes on the track. That person passes the test and gets a face token. Removes their top cube from the track. Everyone else shuffles up to meet. Same thing with the shaman drum track. Whoever has the majority wins the test and removes a cube. And if there's a tie, then it's the person at the top. And the others move up. Red decides to play a three. The shaman would normally move one, two, three to the environment space. But in this case, Red wants to take a personal path. So the Shaman moves one, and then Red uses the second move to go into the personal path with one of his personal path octagons. The Shaman stays there. The third movement point is lost. Red then chooses a personal path card, and he is now on his own personal path. Puts an octagon on the first space, and that's the end of his turn for now. No one else can use this personal path now. On the next player's turn, the Shaman will move forward as normal. The effects of where the Shaman lands will only apply to the other players, not the player that's on the personal path. On Red's next turn, instead of moving the Shaman with his mood card, he will move along his own personal path until he reaches the end, which is a must-do space. And then as soon as that action has been resolved, the Octagon is cleared away. By that time, the Shaman will be far ahead and Red rejoins the group. The Wisdom Space allows you to take a Wisdom Token. When you land on a Mantra Space, if you have the relevant Mantra Token, you can exchange it for the items depicted on that token. If you don't have the relevant Token, then you will lose the items on that token. This is the Jelly Space. After landing on this space for the rest of the game, if players play this special 2 card, they can actually move the Shaman zero to three spaces. Also, after the Jelly Space, if you look at the back of the reference card, each player, after the Jelly Space has, re has been reached, can invoke these special powers exactly once during the remainder of the game. Also note the board unfolding icon under the Jelly Space, which shows you that you need to unfold the next section of board. Finally, the most confusing part of the game, talking. If you land on a talking space, you must take a talking card. And that represents an idea that you've had that you then tried to communicate to the other players. But in a psychedelic state, it can be difficult to wrap your head around the idea and even harder to communicate it to other players. So, take a talking card and that represents the idea that you've had. In this case, a loss of awakening. So let's say it's Yellow's turn. Yellow must move towards a loss of awakening on the talking board. In this case, Yellow has a choice. Yellow goes here and then must pay an awakening token. Then... Yellow can give this card to any other player to represent that he's trying to share that idea with the other player. He then has a choice to move one more space in any direction. So let's say he moves here. And the player that he gives this card to must experience the effects of that space. In this case, an intense moment of value 4. Now after Yellow has resolved their talking card, you keep going as part of the same talking action until all three players have been talked to and in each player can only be spoken to once. So let's say that Yellow gave her talking card to Red. Now Red takes a talking card. Again, this is the idea that Red is trying to communicate a piece of the greater paradox. So Red moves towards there on the board. 
that's here, and gets a piece of the greater paradox, and then can choose to move in any direction. Let's say that red goes here, and give this card to another player, and whoever he gives this card to will get that benefit, the wisdom. Let's say that red gave the card to yellow again. Yellow picks another card, must move towards loss of nervous system, which is over here. The most direct route is this way, so loses an awakening token. And now must give this card to the last player who hasn't been spoken to, which is brown, and chooses not to move, which means that brown must also lose an awakening. That's it! I hope you enjoyed the video!